In today's Zoom session, I'd like to look at the two types of problems that we look at in uh, chapter seven and identify a pattern that, uh, that happens in those two problems. In each problem, we're looking at some random variable. That random variable, we're going to look at one of two kinds of parameters. We'll either look at a proportion or we'll look at a mean. First of all, suppose that we have a situation where the population parameter that we're interested in is the proportion of the population that satisfies a particular uh, characteristic. So essentially then, this distribution is a binomial distribution. In a hypothesis test, we're going to take some sample. In this case, we're getting this sample. It'll have a sample of size n. And there'll be a certain number of successes, r. r successes. What happens then is that we begin to build another distribution. We take that R divided by N and that gives us a, a sample proportion. And that's gonna be called our sample statistic. We're going to think about every sample of size N and the proportion that we'd get from each of those different samples this distribution of sample proportions will be normally distributed with a mean of whatever this proportion was back here and a standard deviation, the mean of these sample proportions and the standard deviation of these sample proportions is going to be the square root of P, the probability of, of this occurring, the proportion over there, times Q, the probability of it not occurring. Q is always going to be equal to one minus P, all divided by N. Now in a hypothesis test, we're going to have a null hypothesis which is going to say that this proportion is equal to some particular value. Since I'm talking in general terms here, I'm gonna call that value P sub zero, but it's some number that we know. There's gonna be an alternative hypothesis, which will be of one of three types. It will either be that P is less than this value, or that P is greater than that P zero, which is given by the null hypothesis, or that P is not equal to that P zero. This is called a lower tailed test if P is less than. It's called an upper tailed test if P is greater than, and it's called a two tailed test if P is not equal to. Now, because this standard deviation of the distribution of sample proportions can be calculated, assuming that the null hypothesis is true, then we'll be able to use a Z distribution for our third distribution. We will always call this standard deviation of the distribution of the sample statistic, uh, the standard error. A Z distribution is a standard normal distribution. It has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. We'll, we'll translate this test, this sample statistic to a test statistic or a Z value and it's always done the same way. The Z value is calculated like this. You take the sample statistic minus 
the mean of this distribution, which is going to be the proportion that is given because of the null hypothesis, so P0, divided by the standard deviation of this distribution, which we're always going to call the standard error. Now, that test will now be conducted in the following way. We'll calculate the p-value. If it's a lower tail test, then we'll find the area that's below that z-value. If it's an upper tail test, we will find the p-value to be the area above that z-value. If it's a two tail test, it's a little more complicated. We need to pay attention. Did the z-value end up in the positive part of this graph or did it end up in the negative part of this graph? If it ends up in the positive part, we'll find the area above it and multiply it by two to give the two tails. If the z-value ended up being negative below the mean, then we'd find the area below that z-value and multiply it by two to give us the two tails. Okay, so that's what happens with a proportion test. Now I want you to, to see some similarities and differences between that and the situation where our random variable has a parameter of the mean. So we need to look at the problem that we're working on and, and identify is the question about means or is it about uh, uh, proportions? So this distribution will have a mean and it will have a standard deviation. Again, there's going to be a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is going to say that the mean is equal to something. The null hypothesis always says that the parameter is equal to something. For our discussion here, I'll call that mu zero. It's some number that's known. The alternative hypothesis will be of one of three types. It'll either say that this parameter is less than that number, or it's greater than that number or it's just plain not equal to that number. This is called a lower tail test. This is an upper tail test and this is a two tail test. Much like in the previous example, we're going to take a sample of size n. In the previous case where we were looking at proportions, we took a sample of size n. In this case, we take a sample of size n. With that sample of size n from this population, we calculate the sample mean. We'll call that x bar. We think about every possible sample of size n and the mean that we'd get for each of those samples and look at the distribution of all those sam sample means. The mean of that distribution, the mean of the sample means is going to be equal to the mean of this original population. That comes from the central limit theorem. The standard deviation of these, of, of this distribution is going to be this standard deviation, the standard deviation of the original population divided by the square root of n. Now, much of this is very similar to when we were doing this case. We took a sample, but now we needed to pay attention to what the mean and the standard deviation were in that case. When we're doing a proportion, it's this information that's, that's produced. In this case, it's this information. Now, here's another difference in these two uh, cases. In, in this situation, we seldom know what this standard deviation is. We have to approximate that 
So we'll approximate that value by looking at the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Because we're doing that approximation, we're going to look, use, instead of a z distribution to calculate this probability, we'll use a t distribution that helps adjust for any error that we're getting because of this. A t distribution looks much like a standard normal distribution. It's got a mean of zero, just like a standard normal distribution does. And it has a standard deviation that's greater than one. And that the t distribution depends on the degree of freedom. And in this chapter, the degree of freedom is always going to be n minus one. So we calculate this sample statistic. We translate that standard that sample statistic to a t value, which is calculated the same way as a z value is. You take the sample statistic minus the mean of this distribution, which is going to be the same as the mean that we're, that we're assuming in the null hypothesis, and all divided by the standard error. So what I want you to observe here is that that calculation for the, for the t and the z are done the same way. You take the sample um, statistic minus the mean of whatever this distribution is divided by the standard error or the standard deviation of, of this distribution of sample proportions. That gives us a T value. If we're doing a lower tail test, our P value will be the area below that T. If we're doing an upper tail test, the P value will be the area above that T. If we're doing a two-tailed test, it's a little more complicated. We need to pay attention. Did the T end up being positive in the upper tail or negative in the lower tail? If it ended up being in the upper tail, then we will take, find the area above that and multiply it by two to get the two tails. If the T ended up being a negative value, we will find the area below it and multiply it by two to get the two tails. So a lot of similarities, but some very specific differences. So the key in solving these problems is first of all, to identify uh, our, is the problem something to do with, with proportions or is it something to do with means? Okay, it's an old hypothesis talking about proportions or means. If it's a proportion, then, uh, then this standard error is going to be calculated this way. If it's a mean, the standard error is going to be approximated this way. If it's a proportion, we'll be able to use a Z test to find the P value. If it's a mean, we'll need to use a T test to find the P value. Those are some key similarities and differences in the two types of problems that are involved in chapter seven. Okay, good luck everybody.